Welcome back to Hurting People Do Cry Podcast. My name is Willa Powell, the host, and I have TJ with me. Hey, TJ, how are you? Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing just great. You know what? We don't have our buddy here, yeah, Janelle, we so her. yeah, we, we're a little lost. We're not lost, y'all, trust me, but we, we do miss her not being here with us today. Um, today, we're going to be talking on the topic of love since it's close to Christmas. Um, what do we all need? We all need is love, right? And we all want to be treated love. Um, to wanna, I mean, TJ, if you don't mind, can you open up with prayer before we get started, please? Absolutely. Giving all honor to God. We want to thank you for this union to this evening. Lord, cover us um, and keep the angels around us. Let us stay the course. We decrease as you increase to give us the right words to um, say and that it be mindful for the ears of the people that are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, T. Thank you so much, TJ. Um, Our other host, Janetta, um, her roommate uh, has the flu, so uh, she decided not to be here today just to protect herself and us as well, and we do appreciate it. But like I did say, we want to talk on the subject of love and a lot of people want to know, what is love? Who can define love? Who can uh, know what love is? Okay, um, I found 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5. It says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps on record of wrong of wrongs. It keeps no records of wrongs. Excuse me. Right. And then I was looking up the word love and it says an intense of feeling of deep, um, a great interest and pleasure in something, a feel deep affection for someone. Uh, like or to enjoy very much of love and you know love is an action word you prove you show your love to people you just don't tell them a lot of people can say they love you but is that what they really saying or prove that to me you know through action show me how you you really love me yeah and um love doesn't cost money and it's free um a lot of times think some people only know how to furnish uh, other people with gifts, but just being present, just um, feeling a void of loneliness, um, just companionship in general, somebody to talk to, that's a way of showing love. Um, sometimes people think that you have to um, like I said, buy gifts or if they don't have the right, um, right, what they don't have, if they don't have money or they don't think they look right, you know, as far as clothes or the material things that they have, that they cannot, um, give love or feel like they re- can receive love, but that's not the case. Love is pure, like, um, first Corinthians. 13, 4 to 5, it's kind, it's patient. It's not um, easily angered. Right. And let's talk about the agape, love of mankind. That's love. You know what I'm saying? You know, we all reach out and we try to get love from different places, uh, from different people. Um, Like daughters, you know, they don't have the father in their life and they try to find love through other men. Or someone just like their father, you know what I'm saying? Or and then find out that's not the love that they really need to search for. Um, children find love through their parents, uh, especially babies when they're born. You know that closeness that they have with their mother. You know that's mm-hmm. the love that they're looking for. Um, I was just saying, you know, young girls and sometimes older um, girls look for love the wrong places. Uh, and why do we do that? Because we feel abandoned. Um, they feel left out. They don't feel like they're getting the love that they need from their mother. Um, and that's, you know, that's a hurting thing, you know. So they'll go out and get it somewhere else. Uh, they get love through sex. 
Um, they find love through uh, abuse. They feel like if their man jump on them and beat on them every day, they're doing it because they love them. That's not true. That's not love. That's not the way we show love. We know it's an action word, but that's not the action that we want to get out of love. Yes. Um, love can, um, it's not verbal abuse. Definitely not verbal abuse. And and we talk about daughters, sons, um, <clears throat> The parents, how they display love to the kids will sometimes make them want to seek a certain type of affection that they're not getting from their parents. Um, just by, you know, some kids can, or even adults, can go months without getting a hug, without even someone saying I love you. And how that affects them is they seek that out from somebody else instead of from the person they really want it from. And um, that can be detrimental to that individual, unfortunately. Right. You know, a guppy love is like a selfish love. Uh, it's the highest level of love to offer. It given without any expectation of receiving anything in return. And, you know, offering a guppy love is a decision to spread love in any circumstances, including destructive situations. You know, so like I was saying before and early in the conversation, as women, you know, we have to be careful where we find love. Um, love can hurt. Yes. Uh, like I said earlier, love is is so powerful because you know why? God is love. Yes. And that's where we need to seek our love from is God. You know, he made us before we was even um, formed into our mother's belly. So he got to love us. You know what I'm saying? So uh, agape love is a love that's it's unconditional. Unconditional, right. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all is looking for is unconditional love. The absolute, they say, unconditional, absolute love. And that was displayed in the highest form that Jesus could have ever done because he died on the cross for our sins. And um, with that, him loving us unconditionally, meaning all of our faults, um, the way we think, how we um, treat people in spite of all of that he still displays and shows us love shows us love by getting up in the morning shows us love by blessing us with um um things that's been immeasurable like if you you need help with something he'll send a vessel meaning someone to come and help us get through the roughest time of our life or something that we need that's that agape love the absolute love and he shows that you don't need to seek that from anyone else. You need to get that from him through the word. Great. That's exactly right, TJ. You know, I was just sitting here thinking about um, the love that God gives us. Like you say, he wakes us up. He gives us that forgiving love. You know what I'm saying? And that's, a, that's, that's the most important love that I look for is that forgiveness love. Um, also, as well... Um, I look at children that clings um, to their parents, especially their mother. And then when that mother pushed them away, that's rejection um, for that child. And then that child wonder, you know, why does she do this to me? Do she love me? Do she want me? I was looking at a program, TJ, and a um, young lady was on there was talking about her mother had 16 children. Ooh. And... Out of those 16 children, she was the only one that was given away. Others went to other relatives. Um, the mother was on drugs real bad, so uh -huh. she couldn't handle all the kids. But I'm saying, I said, you still yeah, having babies. children. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this child was the only child that she gave away and let them people adopt her. And she was wondering, did you not love me enough to either give me to my dad or somebody in my family? You gave me to somebody that I don't even know that didn't know me. And then found out, you know, she gave her child up for drugs, switch out for drugs. Oh, wow. And so the child, she was so upset, you know, why? Why? I just want to know why you kept the rest of them. Why you always went to go get the rest of the kids, my brothers and sisters. But you never did come back to get me. And that right there, that was rejection. Uh -huh. And she said, I never wanted this to happen. I love it. She said, well, how can you tell me you love me 
and you gave me away. You never looked for me. I had to come out and look for y'all. I had to locate you. And she was saying, well, I was so messed up with drugs, you know, that she was in a dark space at the time. Yeah. And she was saying, well, if you're in such a dark space, why did you keep the rest of the children, my siblings and not me? Why did you keep having babies if... You know, you was in that dark place, and she said she was so sickness, and I do understand that. Yeah. But the daughter didn't understand. You gave me away and kept the rest of them. What about me that you did not love? You know, um, with that being said, we try to, unfortunately, we try to look for closure for things, and we can't find that. Unfortunately, I hate that young lady. She couldn't find the answers that she really truly needed to validate why she was giving up. Right, and she was so angry, and then the parents were like, you know, when we talk to you, you cussed us out every time we try to talk, but they have to understand their hurt that that child still had inside of her from the age when she was a baby, and now she's 27, she still feel that anger. Yes. You know, and she was like, well, I've got kids, and I didn't even know how to introduce them to my to their grandparents because I didn't know who y'all were. You know, and she and the mother were like, well, I want to make a change now. I want to do it now. And then the host had to say, you know, things are not going to happen in one day. You know, you have to give her time to heal because that's a lot of pain that she built up mm -hmm. and a lot of anger. And then the sad thing about it, she didn't even know she was adopted until she found the paperwork when she was 15 years old. Wow. She thought those people was her parents really because her parents. she was giving away a, a baby. Wow. So she really grew up thinking those people was her real biological family. Wow. And found out at 15, apparently the mother had left some papers on the bed, and that's when she found out that she was adopted. Now, that was her hurt. Ooh, you yes. know what I'm saying? So she went to them, and she said, well, how could y'all tell me? Y'all love me, but you never told me I was adopted. And they were like, well, we didn't know how to tell you that we just wanted to love you and raise you in a good environment. She said, and I appreciate that. She said, I lived the best life, but I still wanted had to know who longing. my bio right. I still had that longing of who my biological parents was. And so the host was saying, well, do you think this was a plus that your mom gave you the way that she did because she loved you and wanted you to have a, a better life. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, I understand it. But she said, that's not the issue. The issue is she gave me away and didn't look for me. Mm -hmm. But she kept the rest of my 15 brothers and sisters. I've seen that probably and her that's her the, I think that's what the thing hurt mm -hmm. her the most. She didn't feel the love. She felt more abandoned mm -hmm. than she did love. And then she found out that the father, who was her father, because they did a DNA test, found out that it wasn't her father. Oh, my Lord. So, you know, that that's a lot of hurt when it comes Jesus to Christ. love. So, you know, the mama was like, well, I'm willing to show you love. I'm willing to show you how much I love you. But like we said earlier, love is an action word. Mm -hmm. You can talk it all day. And, yeah. But do you really mean it? You got mm -hmm. to show me now that you love me. You got to show me now that you want me in your life. But like you, like I said, it's going to take time for that heart to heal. Because once you say something, you say you love somebody, then you stab this person in the back. You don't messed up trust and everything. But guess what? As we talked about earlier, we still have to forgive. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, 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 yeah we do. You know, with um, especially... Is an issue with um, fathers and children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the fathers harbor a lot of, um, I don't want to say hurt, but hurtfulness, hurtfulness, they harbor that because of how um, the situation happened with the mother and the kid involved. Sometimes the father will walk away and then want to come back into the kids life when they're older to make the decisions where they can have a form of better relationship and that takes a toll that's a process and some fathers think that they is a lickety split thing I'm your father I love you should be an automatic thing and sometimes that takes takes its toll and it is a process and um you both people meaning the child and the father just talking about fathers that uh, 
if they want to have a show love, had a bad, better relationship, they're going to have to toe the line. They're going right. to take all the hurt and the pain because you have to go through, I guess, a healing process. Right. And, um, you know, they grieve. You grieve. Grieve the hurt and pain and they ask the fathers why they didn't want to show up. Well, you know, and you can you imagine looking out the window waiting for your father to come and they don't show up? Yes. They and you, don't show up. And then you hear a lot of people, a lot of men say, I can't show you love because it was never taught to me. Yes. And then I, I got to make this point too, TJ. I got to make this point. Um, when I was saying that the man said, I, how can I show you love when ne- love was never showed to me? That goes to, I remember my mama telling me, if a man don't take care of and love their mother. Yes. They can't love you. No. And that you is so, so true. true. That is true. A lot of people may say that's a myth, mm-hmm. but to me, that is true action. Um, I've seen situations where um, they treat their mother wrong. They, they disrespect their mother or they've done something to their mothers. And then you try to love another woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You couldn't even you love take, your mother. Cause so how can you love me? You take that baggage. So you what take was, that baggage, right? So what was it that they their mother didn't show them love? In what aspect did they harbor that hurt? Right. And they put it off on their uh, um, love interest. Mm-hmm. And then there you go: the verbal abuse, the physical abuse. Um, just them not showing love, not mm-hmm. showing that action, mm-hmm. uh, spending time with them, right. um, wanting to build a better future. Right. And then, like I was saying before, you know, if you're in a, a, a family where there's a lot of abuse, mm-hmm. uh, father beating on the, the wife or the wife beating on the husband and kids grow up with that type of situation, it's hard for the other person to show if they get into a good relationship it's hard for them to show love. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But sometimes you have to wait on God. Yeah. You have to wait. A lot of people Ooh. do these, what, these apps where they go on black people meet and black all planet. black planet and stuff and get on there and try to find love. My question is, why do you think they on there? Trying to find the same trying thing. Trying to find the same thing. And some, tell the truth, some of them on there just, just for one thing. Yeah, for hooking up. Just for hooking up. And that's it. And that's not where you're going to need to find find love. God says, seek me. Seek ye first. The seek ye first the kingdom. Right. That's exactly right. You have to wait on God. Because if you go ahead of God, then you're in a world of hurt for Yeah, real. yeah. Because he's going to let you go ahead and do what you want to yeah. do. Exactly. Yeah. And and um, it's a lot of situations out there. And I'm not only talking about young girls. I'm talking about guys as well. Mm-hmm. Guys the same way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We see a lot of women abuse, but there's a lot of guys abuse. They don't know how to handle a lot of love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I said love is an action. It's just not something that you just say to somebody. Oh, I love you. Then you go out the door and talk about that same mm-hmm. person. So my thing, if if you can't love me, how you love God for somebody you never seen? Yeah. You know? How do you recognize love? You have to recognize love from, from Jesus. And then, re- then you can recognize love from others. Right. Understanding why he died on the cross for you. Um, understanding how absolute, absolute his um, love is unconditional. Once you embrace that and understand that, then when that right person comes along, God will give you the um, information you need to recognize that this is genuine is true. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I was saying before, you know, uh, men beat on women. And then you say, why are you still there? Well, I'm there for my children. Or, oh, he just loved me. Maybe I did something to upset him. There's no excuse for a man to beat on a woman or a woman to beat on a man. Absolutely. That's not love, y'all. That Honestly, is that is not love. Love hurts. Love will kill you. Literally. And then when you're dead and gone. What can you say? I thought you can't say I thought he loved me. No, he loved you to death. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> and love doesn't hurt the person that you with hurts you. That part. Yeah. <laughs> that part. The uh and and the strongest what uh, 
what on TikTok now they say self-care. Mm -hmm. The best self-care you can give yourself is to love you first and let go and let God. Right. Let go of that person that means you no good. So, TJ, have you ever been in a situation where you was with somebody and you thought it was love, but it really wasn't love? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. want to talk about it? Uh, <laughs> it was, I mean, I have, yeah, just me giving it all, thinking that um, this person wanted the same thing I wanted. And it appeared as though we were on the same page in one accord. And it wasn't. I, I I was fooling myself. I was. So, but I, it wasn't a thing where we were um, verbally abusing or physically abusing. It's just that um, I thought that God had directed this person in my path. I believed that because the talk was good. The 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 scripture was the talk, good. The talk is always good. yeah. The scripture was good. Um, going to church was good, but um. That was a trick. <laughs> the trick of the devil. Yeah, I don't want to say that part, but I believe at one time I thought we were equally yoked and we were not. We were we were friends. Uh, friends first always. But right. realizing that um, if you you want somebody, you do want somebody on the same level you are. Um, and you just want somebody that's trying to go to the same place you go and you can grow together. Right. And you hear that um, you grow apart, and unfortunately, you do. And if God is in the mix and he don't want that to happen, he'll let you go through it because you went before him. And then he'll say, okay, now, we were, I'm getting you out of this. And thank God that I'm rooted in the word enough that he loved me enough, agape love, unconditional. Mm -hmm. That he says, you know what, I'm not going to let you go through this really serious, heavy not invest too much time in it and um it just god is so sweet he gives you such a sweet relief right and um i got that so oh wow i remember uh being in a relationship and um like you said you thought you was equally yoked and you thought like you said the talk was good and all this and that and then realize you know they got too comfortable and I think in a lot of relationships, people get too comfortable in a relationship. And then you start seeing signs. Okay. But you don't want to see the signs. You okay. overlook the signs. Okay. And like, oh, no, this, no, nah, we're going to be all right. And blah, blah, blah. You got to realize God give all of us signs, Ooh. discern spirit yes. that we do not pay listen. attention to yeah. or listen to. Even he'll bring it into a dream. Ooh, you understand what I'm yes saying? I'm, I'm telling y'all, it will happen. It, it, it happened to me, trust me. And I stayed in that relationship and I tried to make it work. And I was married and I tried to make it work. And I did everything. And, you know, I was working for this company, making this good money. And then I'm like, Lord, where is my money going? What, what in the world? And then I'm like, wait a minute, something ain't clicking. Mm -hmm. Going into my 401k almost every two months trying to pay bills, cars breaking, still trying to love this man, yeah. still trying to do what's right in God's eye, you know, mm -hmm. and then found out everything was taken from me. Oh. And I can't tell you this, I wasn't in church. I did not put God first in my life at the time. And then I was introduced to go to church and I started going to church and started going to church and I felt better. Okay. And then a message came and it stuck to me. It says, why hold on to something that God is trying to take apart, mm. but you're not listening or looking at the signs that he's giving you. Mm -hmm. And that stuck into me. And I said, well, God, this message for me, this mm -hmm. message... But, you know, to make a long story short, we separated, we divorced. I lost a lot. I lost a lot. And I can't tell you this. After that relationship, I separated myself, me and got my children with me. And I started going to church. I started getting into my Bible. Mm -hmm. And TJ, things was coming together. Like quick, quick, like, quick, like, quick, like, quick, 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 quick. 
I was my money was staying in the bank. Mm -hmm. I was building up on so much. Mm -hmm. And I like, Lord, where is all this blessing coming from? What what is it? And then it came to me. I gave you so many signs to let you know you cannot put nobody in front of me. Mm -hmm. I am God and God alone. We cannot put people in front of God because he would still show you who he is. And he showed me because I had to go through to get get through. through. Mm -hmm. And you know, you said that I believe, but we do not. God lets you know that person, and it doesn't take you six or seven months. It'll take you two minutes, and he'll tell you that person ain't for you. But you like the um, the the blueprint, the copy, I should say. We'll say blueprint, but really it's a copy. Um, we like that, and we don't pay attention to the signs like you said. It is so relevant and true. <laughs> it's you be it, you you find that you in invested like three or four years and the Lord telling you, hey look I told you um two weeks before you I told you five that. years ago you still sitting up here in this same situation yes yes well, you know yeah but he he will okay. let you know yeah, he, he will, will he will. will let you know but you got to have the ear to hear and once you get rooted in your word meaning study and pray. Even fast if you need to. He'll show you the signs. Exactly. And then it's up to you to make the decision on how you want to. You know, because he gives us free will. He doesn't right. interfere. He gives us free will. Exactly. So, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I've learned a lot of people can't accept se- separations. Yeah. Um, they will bother you until you know they tell you well i'm gonna i'm yeah. gonna kill you or, or this and that or i'm gonna you, kill you know, my I son if i can't or, have you yeah. or you know this ain't right i'm gonna always love you but during that time did you show me how much no. you love me do you really think killing yourself is gonna make you me love you more do you think you jumping off that bridge gonna make me know you you jumping off oh, that bridge because you want to jump off that bridge insurance. Yeah, now if you got about a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, you can go ahead on the yeah. job. I ain't gonna you stop. The beneficiary, yeah. We're not gonna stop yeah. it. <laughs> I know that was wrong. Forgive but yeah, me, that, but that's Lord forgive me. But he said it's the truth. That. It's the truth. So yeah. you know, it's not about money. It's all about care. Yeah. It's all about love. Yes. Um. It's all about getting along. Mm-hmm. Um. Love is a hard word. It is, it is. You know what? So, what is your opinion when you meet someone and just a uh, scenario and you fall in love um, <clears throat> and both parties are really into each other and you can see how this could possibly work? Would you suggest counseling first before getting married? Or you think that um, as long as you both Stay rooted in the word, read the Bible, pray, go to church that you can uh, omit counseling? That's a good question. Um, I know a lot of pastors, if they're going to marry you, they want you to come to counseling. Mm -hmm. I get that. Okay. My counseling is God. Okay. Because it says seek he first. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's who I'm going to seek first. Okay. And like I said, the science will let you know. Absolutely. What we just talked if, about. Just what we just <laughs> talked about. If this going to be the right person. Mm-hmm. Because you can go to counseling. And you can hear the, hear the preacher tell you this and that. But it's still your choice. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. A lot of people go to counseling and then what? Still get divorced. And then they said, oh, we might need to have... No, we don't need no counseling, baby. Because this is what God... Look, God mm-hmm. said, this ain't it. If this ain't it, this ain't it. That counselor ain't going to help no way. Because this is not who God really... It was wants never you. it. From it was the never in, mm-hmm. manifested from the beginning. You understand me? If there's mm-hmm. something that we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. That we thought was right to do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, me and my husband, we didn't go to counseling. 
didn't. We didn't. And like I said earlier, we had our ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But it's all about how you deal with stuff. Okay. How you deal with your ups and downs. Question. How you deal with your ups and downs and ups and downs, were they to the point that you wanted to separate or your relationship was in jeopardy or was just um, growing pains? Do you, do, do, I think do you we, I'm yes, I think we grew as we was together. Mm -hmm. uh, we separated a lot. You know, we, before we got married, we were uh -huh. together, was not together, together, was not together. And then I had told him we was living together. Okay. And I told him that he had moved to Asheville uh -huh. and he had a job there. And I told him the only way I was going to live with another man, you're going to have to marry me because I'm worth, I'm worth being married. If you don't think you... You want to stay here and get me free and don't think I'm worth to being a wife. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here acting like a wife. Uh -huh. And you don't think I'm worth you marrying me. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do that no more. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the only way I, I allowed another man to stay with me, we had to get married. Okay. And if we were still going to go through our situation, we're going to do it as a married couple. All right. You know what I'm saying? And then, like you said, we had to push a lot of people out. That's but important. That's it. Very important yes. because you got people on the outside trying to tell you how to do your marriage. You ain't even married. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah. Um, I don't think. And I understand you may have friends. That, yeah. Oh, I don't think you need to let that go. But you don't know what's behind closed doors or what we're going through. How can you tell me something, and you haven't even been through a marriage? You, you understand what I'm saying? Been Never been married. And that's an issue. And that's an issue. Now I could, you can give me suggestions, mm -hmm. but it's but up I'm not to me. You how to run your life, right? It's up to me to take that suggestion. And say, oh, I thank you, I can. You know what? Misery loves company. Yes. Um. Yeah. I don't think. Um. Sometimes I don't think a single person should weigh in on their friends if they're married. I just don't think so. Well, yeah, you know, unfortunately, I, I was married. My husband passed away. Mm, um, sorry to hear that. Thank you. Um, what I realized, and we used to talk a lot about how we felt and the expectation. I learned that communication is key. And I think that's the um, highest form of respect and love. You communicating and talking things through. And I think that helps for for healthy relationship and for the love to be expressed in in so many other ways. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to express love, um communicate. Yeah. Show weird. it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um like I mean I don't know if you was in church uh that Sunday and we were doing anniversary, your anniversary mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh my god. You forgot." I forgot. <laughs> And you know, and my husband was like, what are we going to do for our anniversary? And I'm like, anniversary? I forgot about the month we was married. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, we've been, so, been together so long, mm -hmm. and we just let it flow. And then, you know, I said, oh, my God, he's going to kill me. You know, mm -hmm. I forgot my own anniversary. But the best thing I liked about it, he remembered. Yeah, one of the two. One of, somebody remembered. <laughs> we kept, kept yeah. on going, didn't know nothing. But the best thing I liked about it is that uh, he remembered our anniversary. And... You know, like they say, a lot of people didn't think we was going to make it. But I'm through the ones that still that did. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I thank God. Um, yeah, there's signs. There's um, dreams mm -hmm. of um, of signs that God give us. Um, but my main point is seek God first in all things it that you do. That, that's right. That's marriage. Everything. Everything. Job, homes, everything. If God giving you that design spirit, he's not giving it to you uh, for no reason. Uh, if he's putting that stuff in a dream, he's not putting it in a dream. He wants he want you to see it. And you be like, wait a minute, this already happened. Where did, where did this happen? And you be like, oh my God, I, I, met, I, I dreamed about this. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of ways that God gives us signs and uh, people out there, uh, love can be good and love can be bad. And the best love is what now? Um, agape love. The agape love. Unconditional. But unconditional. And that's the love that God gives us. And I want to thank everybody who's listening 
today. Thank you, yeah. TJ. We had a very good conversation. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. Yeah. Um, people out there that's listening to this podcast, um, don't get us wrong. Um, like I said, a lot of people have their own opinions of what they think love is. It's up to you how you feel your definition yeah. of love. Um, I do want to thank you for joining in this week. Thank you, TJ. I want to say, Janetta, we miss you. Yes, we hope we you do. get way better. I know this podcast would have been a little bit longer if you was here, but um, I do appreciate you when, you, when you're when here and when yeah. you're not here. So you go ahead on and get well. Um, again, if you would like for us to discuss anything or topic or anything, please email me at wpproduction2022 at gmail.com. You don't have to uh, let anybody know who you is. We will not read your name. Um, We will just read the email and discuss what you want to talk about. Um, Also, tune in every Saturday at 3 o'clock listening to the new podcast. Uh, We try to put one up every week for everyone to listen to. Don't forget to subscribe, like, please Please, if you listen to this com- this podcast, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know what we need to improve. If you want to talk about something you come in, put it in the comments. We can go from there. All right? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, TJ. I appreciate you. Thank everyone for listening. And everybody, have a good night. Hope you have a great holiday. Be yes. safe out there. Please be safe. Love you. And God do too. Bye-bye. All right now. <laughs>